for us it kind of is extraordinary because it's the one that keeps us alive so it's sort of important in that sense um, but one of the one of the probably the biggest lesson that's come out of astronomy in the last 500 years is the fact that we're really nothing special you know we used to think that the earth was the center of the universe and then actually we discovered it isn't the sun is is the center of the solar system at least then for a while we thought well maybe the sun's the center of the universe and then we discovered actually no the sun's in the boring suburbs of a galaxy and so on so one of the things sort of slightly depressing lessons of astronomy is we're really nothing special um, and in that sense it, i suppose it really shouldn't come as a surprise that the sun's nothing special either it's just like many billions of other stars Well, based on all the stars we've been able to measure, their masses, their luminosities, their metallicities, properties like that, it tends to fall somewhere in the middle of the distribution. So it's, it's typical. There's a lot more of those than there are of, say, the really big, massive stars. Well, there are symbols for all the major bodies in our own solar system, and some of them come out of, directly out of the, the sort of Greek and Roman mythology. One of the useful symbols that we use is the symbol that represents the sun because the sun is one of our near benchmarks for something that's big, something that's massive. So sometimes when we talk about the mass of large astronomical objects, we simply add up how many masses of the sun it would take to make that object. So here, I mean, one of the things that you often put kind of at the end of a textbook is just a bunch of useful numbers. And one of the, the, the sets of numbers that astronomers use all the time are things relating to the sun. So for example, we often weigh things in, in units of the mass of the sun. So there's the mass of the sun quoted to the number of significant figures we know it. So it's about 2 times 10 to the 32 with 30 zeros after it kilograms. Here's the radius of the sun, uh, which is about 700 million meters. And there's the luminosity of the sun, uh, which is 3 times 10 to the 26, so 3 with 26 zeros after it watts. So that means if you look in a textbook and you see a number, you see 10,000, and next to it you see a big M with this symbol, a circle with a dot in it, that means that whatever they're talking about weighs 10,000 times the mass of our sun. So the symbol that we use is this little circle with a dot in the middle of it, which astronomers tend to refer to as O dot, uh, which is just a little suffix that comes after all these things. <laughs> a lot of times people ask me, what's the closest star in the universe? And I say, well, the sun. <laughs> it's kind of easily forgotten that, the star, that our sun is actually a star. Is it a typical star? <laughs> Well, no, because we live around it, um, but compared to all the other stars we've actually observed, it is typical. It really is about as bog standard as you can get, yeah. I mean, it's a, um, stars, you know, the range of masses of stars, for example, they tend to go from about a tenth the mass of the sun up to maybe a hundred times the mass of the sun as a really massive star. Um, so the sun's sort of right in the middle there somewhere. There are some that are a bit less massive, there are some that are more massive, there are some that are brighter, there are some that are fainter, but it really is pretty typical. So a star is a big ball of nuclear fusion. <laughs> There's lots of gases um, that are condensed in the center. Nuclear reactions happen and that's where chemical elements are created. So that's where you build your carbon and your bigger elements and fill up the periodic table there. I mean, there are astronomers who spend their entire career studying the sun. Um, and the reason why they do it is partly because actually we have a, a sort of vested interest in knowing what the sun's going to do. If the sun's going to go out, it would be useful to know about it. Uh, it isn't, I hasten to point out. When you have these nuclear reactions, they actually release little bits of energy, photons, and those photons get bounced around on the inside for millions and millions of years until they happen to get to whatever you loosely define as the surface of your star, and then off they go on their little path. So from our sun, once a photon escapes, it actually takes eight minutes to get to us on Earth. Um, but in terms of a bigger picture, um, astronomers are just interested in the sun just because it's a typical star. It just happens to be one that's conveniently close. In physical size, the sun is very big, something like 700,000 kilometers, I don't know. You can take 100 Earths and line them up next to each other across the diameter of the sun. So it's, it's huge. Um, so if you want to learn something about the sort of the generic properties of stars, um, then the sun is a very good example just because it's, it's right nearby and we can study it in excruciating detail. We can learn a whole lot more about the sun than we can about any other star. When, when we see solar flares and prominences from the surface of the sun, you can fit, say, the entire Earth inside of those prominences. So the whole sun is just massive. You can. I mean, you need very specialized equipment. You really absolutely do not want to go staring at the sun. Uh, and you absolutely don't want to look through a telescope or a pair of binoculars at the sun. You can really do your eyes permanent damage that way, so don't do it. Um, but with the appropriate equipment, you really can. So we use, you know, you never look 
directly at the sun, but astronomers use detectors which are capable of dealing with those incredibly high light levels without getting damaged the way an eye would, um, and can actually record enormous amounts of information about the sun that we really can't see in any other star. Completely coincidental that in our sky, when we look out from the Earth, the sun, our sun, and our moon look to be exactly the same size. So when the moon crosses in front of the sun, we see a solar eclipse. It's completely coincidental. It could be that maybe if the moon was a little farther away, then it would look a lot smaller, and then we wouldn't see a total solar eclipse. 